We have to look at the corn differently. You know, we always talk about various products, how they increase yield. My strategy is we need to look at how it affects it. How do we reduce stress and how do we keep stress from occurring? Genetically, that crop's going to interact with the environment to its potential. To whatever potential it is that year, we just have to keep stress. We have to minimize as much stress as possible. And it starts from the hybrid that we choose, okay, and get that plant up exposed to the environment and then adding nutrition and whatever else to mitigate stress. During the year, we are trying to anticipate stress and stay in front of it, but we always see something. We always know there's something else going on. We can see that. And the potential, we gotta look at it, the fact that in a 500 bushel yield, you've got plants that have 20 rows, 24 rows, 16 rows, 18 rows different sizes, number of kernel sizes, different weights between the ear, you know, six tenths of a pound, five tenths of a pound, seven tenths of a pound, okay? So we know genetically each one of those individual plants are offering something a little bit different, but collectively we've gotten 500 bushels. Well, we know there's something going on in that individual plant as well, All right? So can we change the potential of that plant? Yeah, I think we can. Have we met the potential on plant? We see a little bit of stress. One day, just, just one day emergence, difference in our state and the surrounding southern states. We can go from about six tenths of a pound to about four tenths of a pound, okay, a year. So how do I say that? I can say, I'll say that we can reduce a plant somewhere between 10 and 20 percent of its yield in one day emergence difference. So how many plants you get up is going to begin to and at one time and that's kind of hard here for y'all because y'all planting in cooler temperatures and you're trying to make sure that crop is not uh, you know it doesn't get stressed at the end through frost and through freeze you know so you can you can get a dry grain. Um, in our state, we want, I'm trying to get 90 to 100 percent up first 12 hours, 24 hours. It's hard to do. But there are things that are in our control that we can do that, okay? Water, okay? Uh, a clean bed, good seed soil contact, not traveling too fast with your planter, watching your depth, getting an even depth, okay? So we want about two inches. Uh, up here, you're probably about one and a half because you're trying to, to capture a little bit more um, temperature, positive temperature to affect, you know, even emergence. Um, uh, no salt, no salt. We're doing a lot of in stuff up here. We don't use in that much. I discourage in uh, fertilizers because salt reduces that germinate. So there's, oh man, there's just so much. It's the first thing I want them to know is, um, are they paying attention to details? And I'm talking about every day. Are they out in their fields studying and being a student in their plant? If not, we want to do that. Second thing we want to do, if we want to use multiple hybrids because that hybrid difference can be 40 to 50 bushels between all the hybrids that are available to buy. So do hybrid testing. So be willing to experiment on your own, okay? The third thing that we want to be able to do is remember to find a, a weather station close by using the app that will help you uh, collect the growing degree unit. Okay, why is that? Because as you keep notes, as you keep records, that's gonna be the fourth one, as you keep records of those kinds of things, then that gives you a chance to go back and look at the growing degree unit and know exactly where that plant is. Because that's what's gonna drive that plant growth, is that temperature. So if you keep that kind of record, then you can go back from year to year to year, instead of days after planting. So that will give you a tremendous amount of information, okay? The other thing is, is learn what the yield, how, where those yield components are formed. And during that V4, 5, and 6 stage, in, on average in Michigan, there's 10 days between that two, those two stages. So you have very little time to react to any kind of stress. So react immediately to any suspicion of, of stress.